What's up guys, it's Christian here and today I'll be doing a Major League Baseball review for the American League and how the first week and a half went so far and I'll be talking about what I think is going to happen going forward not only in certain divisions but for certain players and what I think will happen going forward. So let's just start it off right away with the American League East. So as we all know last year out of the American League East the Boston Red Sox and the New York Yankees also got out of that division to make the playoffs. The Boston Red Sox ended up winning the World Series. The Yankees, I believe, lost to the Red Sox in the... They won the wild card game against the Athletics and then ultimately lost to the Red Sox. Now, or... Yes, I think so. Um, now, this division is a little bit different this year. Uh, the Red Sox gave up a lot. Craig Kimbrell, their closer, isn't even on a roster at the moment. And their bullpen's a little shaky, but I'll get to that a little later. So let's just go right into the team that's currently leading the division, the Tampa Bay Rays. Now, the Tampa Bay Rays were an underrated team last year. They won around, I think, they almost made the playoffs around 85 wins-ish. I could be wrong, but it's around that. And they were led by Blake Snell, who ended up winning the Cy Young and has now also been pitching very well, but has had help so far through Charlie Morton, who came from the... Uh, Astros, who was a backbone, I think won World Series MVP, I don't remember which year. Uh, they also have Tyler Glasnow, I think came from the Pirates, and then Yanni Chirinos also. The problem with that team, which probably will ultimately have them not win this division, if they do, it'd be really surprising to me, is their offense. To name a few, G-Man Choi and Yanni Diaz are providing the runs currently, but if you think of those guys, you don't think of them as crazy awesome like top tier players in major league baseball so the only way i could see this team making the playoffs and even winning this division which would be really hard would be them to trade at the deadline which is a ways away but they would need their offense and these pitchers to ultimately stay healthy and be consistent all the way till july so they could trade at the deadline and be buyers and make a run which they actually were sellers last year, getting rid of Wilson Ramos. Uh, he went to the Phillies. I don't remember if they traded anybody else big, but they would need those starting pitchers as well as Jose Alvarado, who's, I believe, got three saves, who's the anchor of their bullpen. And they would need this to continue to work for them to win this division. Uh, the second team is the New York Yankees, who are dealing with a ton of injuries at the moment. But... Through DJ LeMayu, Glaber Torres, Gary Sanchez, who had um, three run home runs today. Clint Frazier's came up from AAA, who's been great. Um, their bullpen's been good with uh, Ottavino and Britton, but Chapman's been a little shaky. Their starting pitching's have been eh, Tanaka and German have been the best two, but they're waiting for Severino to come back from injury. And Duhar's got an injury problem. Stanton's on the DL, but Tance is on the DL. It's just doing like a New York Mets type thing where they are all injured. I think they will be fine. I think they'll win the – I still think they win this division. I don't know about easily, but I think they will end up winning it. I think they just have too much offense and good enough starting pitching to win a division where the Rays are the second-best team. I don't know. The Red Sox are a little shaky, but I think the Yankees will end up being fine even with the struggles early in the season, losing to the Orioles a few times, but they'll be fine in the end. Now, the team that's currently third is the Baltimore Orioles, one of the biggest surprises so far. I never thought this team could win four out of, four out of the first nine and steal some games against the Yankees. They only have uh, Jonathan VR and Trey Mancini, Jonathan VR coming from the Brewers. And I want you think on their team. They don't have enough pitching or hitting to sustain any success throughout the entire season. They're going to lose a ton of games, and I have them finishing last in this division. Nothing else to say. Um, now, the biggest surprise in this division, the Boston Red Sox, are currently 3-8. and eight. The World Series champs, 3-8. and eight. That's just crazy. Now, why? They only have really two players contributing a consistent basis so far in the first 11 games, J.D. Martinez and Mitch Moreland. Everybody else has been up and down, up and down. I don't really know why, but so far they've been just not good enough. And their pitching has also been really not good enough. Chris Sale, Evaldi... Um, their bullpen, which will ultimately be their Achilles heel this year. I don't think they're winning this division. I don't even know if they're going to 
be second in this division if this continues. But they will have Mookie Betts get going, Ben Attendi, Bogarts, uh, Steve Pierce. And there's other guys. Chris Sale's got to get going. They're pitching. But I think they'll still... They still should be finished second in this division if they can get it going. The question is, will they? But for right now, they need to just get on the right track. They won one nothing against the Dimebacks today. They got killed yesterday by, I think, they had Dimebacks had 15 runs, which is unheard of for them with them rebuilding. But I don't know what's going to happen with the Red Sox. I think they'll get on the track eventually. Just we'll see how long it takes. Now we have the Toronto Blue Jays. Freddie Galvez has been their only good player so far. Their pitching's been okay with Strootman, uh, Shoemaker, who's coming back from, I think, Tommy John from the Angels, and uh, Aaron Sanchez as well. Ken Giles has been good out of the bullpen, who was coming from the Astros. But, like I said, the only thing that matters for that team is Vlad Guerrero Jr., who will eventually come up and be something of a surprise to hopefully all of us and bring some publicity to the Blue Jays. But, in reality, I don't think this team's going to do anything. They'll probably finish fourth in this division. All right, now let's move on to the American League Central. This is a really weird division, as I believe that there was only one team that actually would be contending. But surprisingly, they're not even winning this division currently. Uh, the Detroit Tigers are winning this division at 7-3 and three currently. How on earth? I have absolutely no idea. This team is not good at all. They do have some bright stars. Castellanos in right field, I believe. Um, Jordan Zimmerman's pitched pretty well. But... I don't think this team's got enough hitting or pitching to ultimately chase down the Indians who should win this division in the end. And as I talk about the Indians, they are currently 6-3. and three. Carlos Santana coming back. Hanley Ramirez, a comeback player who I was released by the Red Sox last year, have been really good. Trevor Bauer should be in the race for Cy Young. He's an absolute beast on the mound. Mike Clevenger has also been good in the rotation. Brad Hand, who came from the deadline last year to contend last year from the Padres, has been their best reliever as well. And the biggest things with them, which they should be fine, is Jose Ramirez needs to hit better. Corey Kluber needs to also pitch better alongside uh, Carrasco, who is their other pitcher that's also very talented. And once Francisco Lindor gets back, he needs to stay healthy for this team to ultimately win this division. And I believe that they ended up winning this the only team that I really think is going to contend is the one I'm about to talk about, the Minnesota Twins. Now, the Twins made a lot of moves in the summer, or the offseason, actually. Um, Nelson Cruz, uh, Jonathan Scope, and they also stacked up some pitchers as well. Pineda, they also, now they have Berrios, who's going to be the X-Factor. If he can have an all-star Cy Young-type season, I think this team could definitely make the wild card. As the American League looks a lot weaker than it has been in the past, and I think that they could challenge him. It just depends on Berrios and the guys like Jorge Polanco, who had a cycle this weekend, Max Kepler, Pineda. They have to challenge. They have to probably win around 85 to 90 games to challenge for a wild card, in my opinion, which is definitely possible. And the other two teams in this division are the Chicago White Sox and the Kansas City Royals, 3-5 and five and 2-6, and six respectively. And not a lot to say about these teams. They're both rebuilding. And... They do have some bright spots with Merrifield for the Royals, Tim Anderson, Jose Abreu, and Johan Mankata for the uh, White Sox as well. But neither of these teams are going to challenge in the American League Central. Both rebuilding, both having not enough pitching and not enough hitting to ultimately challenge the Indians, Twins, and who knows, maybe the Tigers. But I think these two teams are going to finish bottom of the Central. And the last division we're going to talk about today is the American League West. The biggest surprise so far is definitely the Seattle Mariners, who are 9-2. and two. I don't think anybody saw this coming after they traded Robinson Cano and Edwin Diaz to the New York Mets, getting back Jay Bruce, who everybody thought was going to be awful, who's actually becoming something absolutely incredible so far. Domingo Santana, something that uh, nobody expected, who was basically left out of the Brewers lineup last year in their postseason run, is tearing the ball. Edwin Encarnacion's not even hanging that well, but he's still on this roster. D. Gordon's incredible. Mitch Haniger, even Tim Beckham, who I think is batting almost 500 or more. I could be wrong. The biggest thing with this team is going to be pitching. They only have Marco Gonzalez, Mike Leake, and closer Hunter Strickland. And I think that the X factor is going to be their pitching because if you listen to that lineup, that lineup is pretty good in my opinion. But the biggest thing is they need pitching to be consistent all the way through the season, which they could trade at the deadline. 
which I think I would expect them to be if they're close to the Astros, which is possible. And I think this team is definitely capable of getting a wild card, and it just really depends on how good their pitching is all the way through the rest of the season. And the team that's currently in second tied with the Astros is the Texas Rangers, a team that I believe will not contend this year. Um, somehow Elvis Andrews is having a very good year. He might end up being an all-star. They signed his triple Cabrera, Joey Gallo, who's known for being awful against the switch. Um, in the new era, they don't have enough pitching or hitting to contend. That's just all about that team. The Houston Astros team that was struggling early, lost, I think three of four to the Rays in the opening, opening series. But like I said, if you, Go down the lineup, Alex Bregman, George Springer, Michael Brantley, a great signing from the Indians, Correa, Altuve, et cetera, Gurriel. I think this team's going to definitely win this division. Um, how long it'll take them to get going is remaining to be seen, but they definitely need pitching to be better. Getting rid of Keuchel, McCullers is now got Tommy John, I believe. They need Verlander, Garrett Cole, et cetera, to continue to pitch and pitch better. They did get Wade Miley from the Brewers, who was a decent signing, probably their best pitcher so far. But they definitely need the pitching to be better for them to win this division. And the last two teams is the Oakland A's, a team that surprised everybody getting to the wild card last year with their amazing bullpen, which is still very good, even though they lost Familia uh, to the Mets again. And I believe that this team, for some reason, always finds a way to contend. So it's definitely not possible they can make the playoffs. Whether they do or not, it depends on their offense. Chris Davis is an absolute animal at the plate. He's going to hit 40-plus home runs again, probably 100 RBIs, because he's an absolute beast. They did lose a lot. Jed Lowry's gone, went to the Mets. They did lose Jonathan Lucroy as well. I don't know what else they lost that was significant from a batter's perspective, but they don't seem to have enough hitting, at least so far, to contend. I think it's possible they could get the wild card, but it's less likely than it is was last year because of the starting pitching is not as good as it was last year. Sean Manaya needs to come back, and they lost a couple other guys, I believe. But I think they do have a chance, but it's probably not likely this year. And the last team in the American League I haven't discussed is the Los Angeles Angels. And all I need to say is they have Mike Trout and Mike Trout only, and there is no chance this team will contend unless... They find a way to actually buy some good players in the market next year and for the years to come for them to get Mike Trout a team because he's signed for the rest of his career basically for 400 plus mil and the only way they can actually do anything is to get other players because they will never contend and I don't think Mike Trout ever will win a championship. And so this is all about the American League and... And then this week, I will be discussing the National League, and I will hope to do this every single week. And if you like this video, please like it, subscribe, share it, just comment below what you think about the American League so far. And thank you, and have a great day.